13. Oh, I thought it was 14. Okay. Go for it. Welcome, everybody, to our little Bible study. All of us um, are so excited about getting into 1 Corinthians chapter 13 today. And um, let's begin with a word of prayer. Dear Father God, in Jesus' name we come before you, knowing that we are only accepted in your beloved Son. And we want to um, give him all the glory. We know that he alone is worthy. And we know that we're going to praise his name forever. And um, we pray that you would help us to be enlightened um, as to what your word truly says, that we may um, interpret it accurately um, for your glory. And we thank you for the King James Bible. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, I want to tell you a little bit about the mirrors that they had in Corinth. They were made out of metal, and they were very difficult to see um, the reflection in. And we're going to be talking about this today. So we're going to refer back to the mirror. Right now, um, let's find out a little bit more about our chapter. Can you see me, Maureen? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So uh, verses 1 through 13 in chapter 13 of 1 Corinthians is about the ministry gifts must be exercised in love and when they will cease. And Paul responds to the Corinthians' questions about spiritual gifts in chapter 12 through 14. So we're still in that answer period. Paul wants to instill in them and in us, um, because he wrote to the believers, what their conduct should be. He corrects how they think, act, act, and labor for God throughout the entire letter. So this uh, 1 Corinthians is all about our conduct, all about our sanctification and growth and how we can be um, thinking right, acting right, and laboring correctly for the Lord. So um, some of people might be wondering when they come to this chapter about several different things, but one of them might be what's meant by faith so that um, I could remove mountains. And we're mm -hmm. going to cover that today. Mm -hmm. um, dispensational Bible study means understanding what Jesus Christ has done um, in the past and what he's doing in the present and what he's going to do in the future. And we're going to look a little bit more into that in a few minutes. Alright, so to sum up chapter 12 in uh, one sentence, and we've been doing that all along throughout our study of Corinthians, um, its spiritual gifts are for edifying the church. Spiritual gifts are for edifying the church. So I will have all of these um, one sentences mm -hmm. available when we get to chapter 16. Mm -hmm. So when, when I do chapter 16, in the notes, um, I will have all 16 sentences that sum up each chapter. So um, let's go and in, get into a little bit before we start about dispensational Bible study. Dispensational Bible study um, says that God has never changed, but his dealings with mankind has changed throughout the ages. And he's given us progressive knowledge um, as the books were being written. So, um, the biggest divisions in the Bible is a division between mystery, um, Romans to Philemon, and the rest of the Bible, which is prophecy. And we said last um, week um, that Galatians was and Thessalonians, both of those two letters, Corinthian letters and the Ro a letter to Romans were all written during the fall and diminishing 
of Israel, uh, which was complete in Acts 28. So um, that's when Luke put down his pen. So let's um, get into our study a little bit more. Okay, so in this chapter 13, Paul says spiritual gifts must be accompanied by charity. Then he describes what charity is, charity. He lets the Corinthians know that gifts are temporary. The gifts that they have are, are temporary. Many of us have been challenged by the lofty level of love mentioned in chapter 13. It is a very high standard that we all fall short of. The word charity means love, but it's more than that because it's a kind of unconditional, selfless love that's sacrificial that only God has. We can only display this kind of selfless love with Christ working in and through us. By offering our bodies a living sacrifice, as mentioned in Romans 12, 1, which means we're ready to serve Him. And by walking in faith in the Spirit, that's the only way that we can display this kind of love. That's the love that God has. Because then we're transformed or reprogrammed by the renewing of our mind, as it says in Romans 12, 2. Practically, we can only accomplish this by letting the doctrine given to us through Paul um, richly dwell. Um, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, as it says in Colossians 3, 16. By letting the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe, 1 Thessalonians 2.13, accomplish this result in us. That's how we get reprogrammed. By spending time in his word, rightly divided. We want to think like Christ. We want the mind of Christ. Colossians, I mean, 1 Corinthians 2.16. Christ in us, his mind and his love will result in charity or love in action. Correct living begins in the mind. Today we are not filled by the Spirit and caused to act perfectly. We must choose moment by moment to walk in the Spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Galatians 5.16 The evil flesh it's also called vile, can never be reformed. That's what Paul said in Romans 7.21. Let's go there. Romans 7.21. Let's see what Paul said about his flesh. Patty, are you there, hon? Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. I find then a law that when I would do good evil is present with me okay so evil is present in our bodies the sin nature is present in our bodies so um, when we were saved we died and rose with Christ our soul and our spirit were saved but um, our flesh was not saved so we have to know reckon and yield to the fact that we are dead to sin, as it says in Romans 6, 2 and 6 through 11. Let's go there. Romans 6, 2 says, Know ye not that so many of you as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. And then if we go now to verse 6, it says, Knowing, so we have to know, this, that our old man is crucified with him, so our old man was crucified with him that the body of sin might be destroyed that henceforth we should not serve sin for he that is dead is free from sin oh you know what 
I forgot. I read uh, Romans six three when I was supposed to read six two. Six two is the one that says, "God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein?" So we have to know that the Bible says that we're dead to sin and reckon it to be true. So um, we're free from sin now. We are not who we used to be. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more, death has no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, just like Christ is living unto God, you know, and rose, Reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we have to know that that's not who we are anymore. We're not who we used to be before we were saved. We are new creatures in Christ. That's 2 Corinthians 5.17. And we're part of the one new man that's mentioned in Ephesians 2.15 also known as the body of Christ. So, we're a new creature, and we're in the one new man, which is a group of people that are going to live in the heavenly places. So, now we need to decide to put off the old sin nature and put on the new divine nature, which is Christ's spirit in us. So, this is how we have victory. So let's turn to Ephesians 4:22 to 24. Why don't you read that, Marine? 4 Ephesians 4:22 to 24. And then Patty, in a little bit, you can read um, Colossians 3:8 through 11. That ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Okay, so this is a decision. We're not trying to, you know, reform the old nature. We're just putting him off. We're just going to say, I'm not going to think that thought. I'm not going to do that deed, you know. Usually things begin in your mind. That's why in verse 23, 423 of Ephesians, it says, And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So our spirit is in our minds. Uh Mm -hmm. So that's where it all begins. Uh That verse is very key. Uh So right living begins in our minds, in our spirit. Now, let's read something similar to putting... So we need to put on the new man, which is the divine nature. That's the only way that we can, you know, accomplish anything worthy at the judgment seat of Christ and to have this kind of charity. So, Patty, please read uh, Colossians 3, mm-hmm. 8 through 11, because it's going to be putting on and putting off again. Okay. Putting off, and then you put on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> First you put off. Go ahead. But now ye also put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge, after the image of him that created him. Okay, so see, we're we're renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. So, um, the new man is the only one that can fill this charity. Okay? And one more verse. Oh, okay, yes. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Mm -hmm. So, um, we're in him and he's in us. And that's um, how we have anything worthy. So we must take responsibility for our actions 
while we keep in mind that as his ambassadors, we represent Christ in the way we live our lives before everyone. So we have to be careful what we say and do and think. Maybe think, <laughs> say and do. Yeah. Start with thinking. So it's evident that the Corinthians were using their spiritual gifts and offices with an attitude of competition and not of love. The church was divided and the situation was getting worse. The spiritual gifts that were supposed to build the church were instead causing it to be torn apart, disrupted, and become chaotic. The Corinthians church had problems. They had division, immorality, stunted spiritual growth, lack of maturity, and confusion in the assembly. The saints displayed poor, unbecoming conduct. Paul explained how they must use the gifts with charity. Paul then explained how the Spirit of God bestowed spiritual gifts when the church was in its infancy. But the gifts would end once the full revelation of the mystery was given to him by Christ. The Corinthians were lacking the Christian graces. And we're going to be going over those. Although the sign gifts have ended, we must still do all things with charity. A person who does not rightly divide the word of God may not understand that the gifts have ceased. Our group, the body of Christ, began in Acts 9, not in Acts 2. That's when the body of Christ began, in Acts 9. Uh, to understand that they have stopped, we must look at Acts, the book of Acts, and all of Paul's letters. When God postponed the kingdom in Acts 7, when they committed the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit by stoning Stephen, um, the supernatural sign gifts were briefly carried over into our time period, the dispensation of grace. They were briefly carried over during the Acts period into the dispensation of grace. Um... Okay. To verify to the Jews that Paul's ministry was from God. So let's look at Acts 15, 12, 19, 11, 12, and 28, 9. Let's start with Acts 15, 12. So um, the Lord is validating Paul's ministry. Um, Maureen, can you do 15-12? Then all the multitude kept silent, <clears throat> kept silence, and gave audience to Barnabas and Saul, declaring what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them. Okay, so they um, declared to the Ju Jerusalem council that they had done all these uh, wonders that God had done the wonders through, through them among the Gentiles. So that was showing the people at the Jerusalem Council um, that God was now working through them, uh, Paul and Barnabas. And so let's go to the next verse. Um, what did I say? Uh, 1911 and 12. Patty, 1911 and 12. And then you can have 28, 9, Marie. Okay. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs of, or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Okay, so, you know, all kinds of, you know, casting out evil spirits and healing people were being accomplished by Paul, which... God is showing that Paul is the perfect replacement for Peter. So everything that Peter could do, Paul can do also. Um, let's go to 28, Acts 28, verse 9. So when this was done, others also, which had diseases in the island, came and were healed. So when Paul was on um, Malta, mm -hmm. he healed many of the sick people there. So that was um, really um, the last known heal healing 
of, uh, that Paul accomplished. Melita? Malta. It's a different island. Oh, it is. Uh, oh, no, Melita. Melita, oh, yeah. Okay. Um, Mil it's Melita, but um, in our, uh, um, you know, map. It's, it, m map now, it's called Malta. Oh, oh okay. okay. I'm sorry. Thank so you, it was sir. Melita. Thank uh -huh. you for correcting that. So, yeah, Melita is now called Malta. Thank you. Um, okay, um, so other gifts and officers, offices were given to inform and edify the early church when there was little or no scripture written for it yet. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 12, 7 through 11 and 28, which is what we did last week. We covered last week. So let me just read those real quick. Um, First Corinthians 12, 7 through 11. Okay. Um, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. So all the, the spiritual gifts were given to profit everyone. For to one is given the Spirit of the Word of Wisdom, to another the Word of Knowledge by the same Spirit. So this is special knowledge that was supernaturally bestowed. And it's given to everyone? In the, uh, no, it was given to some, oh. not to everyone. Oh. Mm -hmm. For to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and self same by work at that one and the self same spirit dividing to every man severally as he will so the spirit of God was distributing to these gifts among the believers in Corinth differently mm. so uh, we said that they were more like a fruit salad okay. <laughs> <laughs> they, they weren't all uniform they were all a little different had little different gifts um, notice that Paul uses the past tense gave and not the present tense giveth in Ephesians 4, 11 through 16. Um, let's go there. Ephesians 4, 11 through 16. We're going to look at the past tense being used. Okay. Uh, so, um, I'll, I'll read these. And he gave some apostles and some, see, and he yeah. gave, mm -hmm. past tense, not mm -hmm. giveth. Mm -hmm. Giveth, every time you have an E-T-H mm -hmm. in the King James Bible, that's present tense. Okay, so when you, when it says, then he gave, that means that it was in the past. Some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of, of fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slate of men, and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. So we're all kind of a team, mm -hmm. and we're all, you know, kind of growing together mm -hmm. and developing. So um, there is no record that Paul had the gift of healing, like I said, after Acts. So someone might say, well, what about 1 Timothy 4.14? Patty, can you read 1 Timothy 4.14? Mm -hmm. Uh, neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Okay, so the, the elders at one point laid their hands on Timothy 
and uh, um, he was given a gift. And I personally uh, believe that that gift was apostleship. That Timothy was, um, you know, ordained an apostle, and this probably occurred sometime um, after he had been chosen by Paul to accompany um, him and Silas, uh, probably um, in Acts 16. So this was still during the Acts period. So let's um, confirm that what, by turning to 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God our Savior and the Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope, Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was in Timothy. <laughs> First Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 1. Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus, unto the church of the Thessalonians, which is in God the Father, and in the Lord Jesus Christ, grace be unto you, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And then if you skip down to verse um, 2-6. Um, chapter 2 verse 6 it says nor of men sought we glory neither of you nor yet of others when we might have been burdensome as the apostles plural of Christ so here it shows that you know one of the gifts being apostleship was prob was bestowed on Timothy so he was an apostle <coughs> Although, um, Paul was the main apostle, <clears throat> the primary, the one that, um, was the, uh, had the stewardship, mm -hmm. <clears throat> as it says in 1 Corinthians 9.17. Let's go there. 1 Corinthians 9.17. Corinthians 9.17. Corinthians 9.17 says for if I do this thing willingly I have a reward but if against my will a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me so the dispensation of the gospel of grace that Christ died for our sins was buried and rose again was given to Paul and it's not only just that verse it's actually all of the doctrine written down in Romans to Philemon. So we have a more sure word of prof a sure word now because it's been written down by Paul. Sure word of mystery. <laughs> okay. So um all the sign gifts ceased when the full revelation of the body of Christ was made known to Paul, as Paul said they would in first Corinthians thirteen, eight through twelve. So we're going to cover that very shortly. It was given to Paul to finish and complete the word of God. Um, Maureen, can you please read Colossians 1.25? So the last um, person to, to write any scripture to fin that finished the Bible is Paul, as it says in Colossians 2, 20, uh, 1.25. Whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Okay, so it was given to, to Paul um, um, to fulfill the word of God, or complete it. We have the Holy Spirit in us to help us to understand what God says in the Bible, and that's in 1 Corinthians 2, 12 through 14, and we'll look at that at the end of today. The Bible is everything we need to be edified and made uh, perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. That's in 2 Timothy 3, um, 17. Today, we still have pastors, evangelists, and teachers, um, as it says in 2 Timothy 2, 2, and 4, 5. But they are not supernaturally filled with knowledge. Today, men are not called to be pastors. But the man who desired that office must study the scriptures to be approved unto God, as it says in 2 Timothy 2.15.
There are no supernatural divine gifts today, as um, we explained in Lesson 12, and we will explain again and more emphatically today. We do not need God to speak to us apart from the Bible. There is no such thing as continuing revelation. God has already spoken and His Word is finished and complete in the Holy Bible. In English, it is preserved in the King James Bible. Christ interrupted his earthly ministry to Israel. In Acts 9, he began his heavenly ministry to the body of Christ. Paul explained that Israel stumbled and then fell and then diminished in Romans 11, 11, and 12. Let's take a, a quick look at that and then we're almost ready to start our study. Romans 11... 11 and 12 says this. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? They stumbled at the cross. God forbid, but rather through their fall, so they did fall, salvation has come unto the Gentiles to provoke them to jealousy. So salvation came to the Gentiles to provoke Israel to jealousy during the Acts period. N uh, now if the fall of them be the riches of the world, so everyone has an opportunity to be saved in the dispensation of grace by just believing what Christ has done apart from going through Israel, and the diminishing of them, which is the diminishing of Israel, the riches, uh, uh, the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness. And then let me just read 13 to verse 13. For I speak to you, Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. So Paul magnified his office. Um, Paul went to Israel first as they diminished during the Acts period. In Acts 28, Paul ends his ministry to Israel for the third and, and last time and goes to the Gentiles. Sign gifts stop then. But individual Jews who believe Paul's gospel can be saved and become a member of the body of Christ. So let's turn now to 1 Corinthians 13. And um, who wants to read the first verse? Patty, go ahead. Oh. Okay. Uh. 13. 13 1. Okay. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Very good. So if a believer does not have Christ's love working in and through them, then even if they are marvelously eloquent, see the tongues of, of men and angels, right? Mm -hmm. With their words, they are like the noise of an irritating toot of a brass horn or a tinkling cymbal. Mm -hmm. God has given us free will. We are saved by choosing to believe what God says, which involves the mind, the heart. Now, we, the mind, remember we said, was spirit. And the heart is our soul and our will. That's how we, the, those three are involved in our salvation. Could you repeat that? Mind, Mind the spirit. spirit, and the heart was the soul, and then the will. After, and the will. Yeah, and the will. Mm -hmm. After salvation, there is, notice that the body was left out. <laughs> the body is left out. <laughs> so after salvation, there is no, no self-condemnation. When we walk, not after the flesh, but after the Spirit, as it says in um, Romans 8.1. So, we're not going to be walking in our flesh, we're going to be walking in our Spirit. Romans 8, 1. But the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus, mentioned in Romans 8.2, operates in us. It's the, the, the life of Christ Jesus is operating in us. The Spirit of life in Christ Jesus. 
Before I came to rightly to right division, I did not have many of the graces displayed in my life because I thought that the body of Christ began in Acts two. I had not I had put myself under the law. The law then made my sin nature or my flesh come alive and abound exceedingly. Paul says in Romans seven nine, I was alive without the law once. So when he was under grace, he was alive. But when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. So when he put himself back under the law, sin came alive in him. Because that's the effect of the law. It was not until I started to understand the Bible rightly divided that I started seeing fruit in my life. So let's go and look at some of this fruit. Let's go to Galatians 5, I mean, Galatians 2.20 first, and then 5.22-26. Galatians 2.20 first. And we, we have, let's read this one together. So let's find it and we'll read it together. Galatians. 220. Tell me when you're all there. Okay. Are you there? All right, let's go. I am, I am crucified with Christ. Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So it's not I, um, but Christ liveth in me. We have his life in us. So turn now to Galatians 5.22, and I'll read these. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, <laughs> joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance and such there is no law and no and against such there is no law so notice here we had love as the very first grace mm. and then at the, in the end of verse 22 we had faith mentioned mm -hmm. now we we don't have hope mentioned but it says against such mm -hmm. there is no law so such things is also hope and they that are Christ, going on to verse 24, have crucified the flesh. So that was our flesh nature, has, our sin nature has been crucified with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. So where is it to walk in the Spirit? Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, and being one another. So this is all very practical um, instructions. So the fruit of the Spirit, the graces, have eternal value because it is something that we allowed Christ to do through us. This is another of the many reasons why everyone should learn how to rightly divide the word of truth. And I have a book called God's Secret, a primer with pictures for how to rightly divide the word of truth. So this, is, this covers the Bible in 100 pages, and it is an excellent primer for learning how to rightly divide the word of truth. It's available on Amazon. So <clears throat> let's read verse 2, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, Maureen. Verse 2. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. Okay. So... Prophecy without charity profits nothing. Without charity, understanding all of God's mysteries have no eternal value. Paul said that supernatural knowledge can puff up in 1 Corinthians 8.1. Remember that? Knowledge puffeth up. Remember when we read that in mm -hmm. chapter 8, verse 1? Mm -hmm. 
Now I, we want to talk a little bit about this um, where it says, and though, so he's not talking about the knowledge of the Bible. He's talking about supernatural knowledge that was used in the early church, right? Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Okay. So, so we can uh, we can have knowledge. Okay, <laughs> we, we, we can, can study have knowledge. the word. And, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. What does that mean that, about? Oh faith. yeah. Oh yeah. We're so we're gonna uh, find out about that that faith in, um, that so that I could remove mountains. Mm -hmm. So go to Matthew oh, seventeen, twenty and twenty one. No. Do you want to read those, Patty? Oh. Okay. Or do you want me to? Uh, I'm not there yet. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Or, I'll go ahead then. Yeah. Seventeen twenty says, and Jesus said unto them. Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Howbeit this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. So they were unable... To throw that um, you know evil spirit out of that one boy at the bottom of, of the Mount of Transfiguration mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so he said to them um, the reason you couldn't do it when they were in private was because of your unbelief so um, in the Bible a mountain represents government mm -hmm. or a kingdom so um, during the tribulation this, this is instruction for the believing remnant during the tribulation. There, they, by prayer and fasting, they will be able to overthrow the, you know, Antichrist's false government, government mm -hmm. his, his false setting up of his kingdom, mm -hmm. and um, his one world government, uh -huh. and his... Um, you know, one world religion. Mm -hmm. So um, that uh, one world religion there, mm -hmm. uh, that's going to be, is, is called, um, you know, in that city, it is the the mother of uh, um, uh, um, uh, 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 Babylon, the mother uh, oh, of the harlot. The harlot, uh -huh. yeah, that we talked about last week. So it is actually something that goes all the way back to when Nimrod had the city where God confused the languages, okay? Oh. That was, um, you know, he, Nimrod was a type of Antichrist, and Babylon is where, you know, the words were, uh, people's languages were confused, right? Mm -hmm. They had different, and God gave, gave mm -hmm. people different languages mm -hmm. back then. So it's going to kind of be revived during the tribulation and so it's there's going to be you know it's going to be you know the Roman Catholic Church and, and the uh, Islam and those different faiths like Hinduism mm -hmm. Buddhism all of those faiths um, are a result of that you know False. idolatry that had begun back then and it will come into kind of like a, a head. Uh -huh. So uh, during the uh, tribulation, is it like saying Mother Earth? No, it's saying the language? mother of all false religion. Oh. It's a mother of all false religion. The Anti -God. big one, anti God. Oh. Yeah, okay. very, very uh, idolatry where they're not worshiping the true God. They're worshiping mm -hmm. everything mm -hmm. else. Yeah, and they're worshiping Antichrist. Okay, oh. so um, that's. Um, kind of what the little flock during the tri tribulation are going to be able to deal with mm -hmm. um, if they, you know, by, by prayer and fasting. Uh -huh. Okay, so um, let's go um, compare this uh, to Revelation 8.8. 8. Go to Revelation 8.8. 8. Are we still on verse 2? 
Yeah, we're still in verse 2. Revelation 8a 8, 8 says, And the second angel sounded, and as it were, a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood. So it's as it were, you know. And so I wanted to mention that that city of, you know, of Babylon, mm -hmm. it's going to be destroyed in one hour. Oh, yep. um, and that's in Revelation 18, 16 through 20. Let's go there. Revelation, Revelation 18, 16 through 20. Um, and saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, for in one hour so great riches is come to naught, and every shipmaster and all the company in ships and sailors and as many as trade by sea stood afar off and cried, when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like this great city? And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness, for in one hour she is made desolate. Where does it say what city Babylon. it is? Um, yeah, that city is um, is in verse two. It says oh, Babylon, see. the great is fallen, is fallen. Oh. Okay, so there. Thank you. Revelation. Yeah. So yeah. go now. <clears throat> okay, if we have faith enough to remove mountains, but do not have charity, we are nothing. Okay. Everything must be done with, with love and the right motive. The right motive being to glorify God and to edify the body of Christ. Patty, could you please read verse 3 in chapter 13? Okay. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me, profiteth me nothing. Okay, so if we give all that we have, including our lives, without Christ working in us, there is no value. Um, verse 4, Maureen. Mm -hmm. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up. So, compare... Um, with the love and unity in Romans 12, 9 through 16. Let's, let's go there right now. Romans 12, 9 through 16. Because this is another time when uh, Paul is talking about gifts and, and love. So I'll, I'll read these verses. Okay. 12, 9 through 16 says... Let love be without dissimulation, that, that means let it be genuine. Abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good, be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love, in honor preferring one another, not slothful in business, that means being a hard worker, Christians should be hard workers, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Because, you know, we're doing everything as unto the Lord. Rejoicing in hope, the hope of the rapture. Mm -hmm. Patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. Uh, oh, I'm going to go all the way to 16. Distributing to the necessity of the saints. That means, you know, caring for them financially and uh, physically as well as spiritually. Bless and curse not. No, no. no. Given to hospitality. I'm sorry. I, my eyes went, went down. Given to <laughs> hospitality. Um, so invite people to your home. Or, um, you know, serve them wherever they are. 
Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not things mind not high things but condescend to men of low esteem be not wise in your own conceits so we should be humble show humility so um, let's so Paul described the characteristics of charity in this verse here so we're going to take it apart and look at it so um, ch uh, ch charity is long suffering see where it says Suffer, suffereth long it's long suffering or patient um, is kind charity is kind is without envy envy you know it envieth not it does not exalt itself it is not prideful the word wanteth refers to an outward display of self-importance mm -hmm. what word um, wanteth in, in uh, the oh. la last part of that, charity wanteth not itself. Or vaunteth? V? Mm -hmm. Vaunteth. Mm -hmm. Vaunteth. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah. So, okay. so what was it again? It, it's right there in the uh, verse, Patty. Verse oh. 4. To, uh, charity wanteth not itself. So it okay. doesn't parade itself. Oh. Okay. Um, with a display of self-importance. You know, look at me, look at me. And it's not prideful. It, see, it's not puffed up. So it's not prideful. Yeah. Yeah. Charity rises above petty squabbles. Love re realizes that the enemy, which is Satan, wants to divide the believers and decides not to let him. So, you know, we're not going to let some little squabble that may have been instigated by the enemy to divide the church, to divide us from another believer. We're going to just, you know, be forgiving. Charity is generous in the way it treats others. It is easy to love the lovable, but how difficult it is to love those who have injured or attacked us. Paul says, being reviled, we bless. Being persecuted, we suffer it. When we read in Romans 12, So, um, he said that also in um, chapter 4, verse 12 of Corinthians. Go to 1 Corinthians 4.12 and see how he said that. He says, in the second part, he says, Being reviled, we bless. Being persecuted, we suffer it. So, let's turn now to Romans 17 through 21. Um, Maureen, you want to read that? 17? Yeah, Romans 12, 17. I'm oh, sorry. Okay. 12, 17 through 21. We were just in 12. But now we're, we're just finishing the last part because we're talking about, mm -hmm. um, you know, not reviling or, or seeking our own vengeance. Oh, okay. Recompense to no one evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, Live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Okay, so we're going to overcome evil with good. We're going to treat our enemies kindly. And um, hopefully they will realize, you know, be convicted and want to trust in Christ. Or um, come to another way of acting. So envy is a terrible sin. Can, Cain envied his brother and killed him. There is no room for envy in the body of Christ. There is so much work that needs to be done in these last days in the dispensation of grace. We know what God's will is for us, right? What's God's will? That all men be saved and, and all come to the knowledge of the truth. Okay, so that's in 1 Timothy 2.4. 
So many are not saved because they have not heard a clear gospel message of what Christ has done for us, such as in 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. Or they have added their own works to his, to Christ. And so they've nullified their salvation if they think that it wasn't enough what Christ did on the cross. Um, such as, you know, saying, well, you know, I got wet. <laughs> my, my, that I contributed to my salvation because I was baptized or something like that. Okay, that's just an example. So, um, furthermore, there are so few who have come to the knowledge of the Word of God rightly divided, as it says in 2 Timothy 2.15. The truth for the body of Christ is found in Paul's writings, Romans to Philemon, and is the mystery. The truth must be divided from the rest of the Bible, which is the truth for Israel's king and his earthly kingdom, called prophecy. In the next dispensation, so we're in the dispensation of grace, and in the next dispensation, it will be all about Israel's king and his kingdom. He'll set up, you know, the first of 1,000 years, and then that kingdom will go on forever, eternal kingdom. So, at this late hour in the dispensation of grace, it's all hands on deck. We're living about here right now. We should all be so busy about our own ministry that we do not have time to criticize us, criticize someone else's. Um, Patty, could you read verse 5, please? Uh, Doth not behave itself in unseemly. unseemly seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. Okay. So, charity behaves itself as becomes a saint, gracious, not impatient. I have regret regretted every time I have ruined something by not using kind words and being impatient. Charity is not self-centered, but esteems others above themselves. While we were yet sinners and his enemies, Christ died for us. That's in Romans 5, 8, and 10. Um, charity does not get angry easily. It thinks the best about people and is not suspicious, accusatory, or paranoid. Verse 6, are you? For, for this cause pay we tribute also. No, no, rejoices. Rejoice it. Uh, 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 13, 6. 1 Corinthians 13, 6. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Okay, so charity finds no joy in evil, but is happy about the truth. We want people to live with us in heaven and not go to that awful other place. Mm. We are thrilled when someone says after 9 or 28 or 54 years of being a Christian, I finally came to understand how to divide the Bible and uh, to understand the message of grace. We want people to have the truth of joy and clarity that we have under grace and not be in bondage in a performance-based religious system. So that's what the law does. It, it makes us think that we're going to earn points with God by doing works. Because in Israel's program, they had to have faith and works. Patty, can you read verse 7, please? Charity beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Okay. So um, it beareth all things. Charity carries the burden for others, and then believeth all things. Charity believes that it's possible for anyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth, the word of, of the word of God rightly divided. Charity endures all things without complaint. Christ and Paul both suffered for us. Verse eight, I mean uh, Maureen. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. 
Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. Okay, so you might want to underline, never faileth, for that's charity. It's not going to end. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then you can underline, un after prophecies, shall fail. Mm -hmm. And then, um, whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Underline shall cease. And whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. So that supernatural knowledge is going to vanish away. Love will not be done away with. What we do with Christ living through us lasts forever. And that will have value at the judgment seat of Christ. Up there. After the rapture. But prophecies will not last and tongues will stop. That's what Paul said. Special supernatural knowledge will also vanish away. Paul wrote this Corinthian letter from Ephesus in Acts 19. He knew that Christ would finish giving him the revelation of the mystery. Okay, so let's take a look at that. Um, Romans 15, 29, and then 16, 25, and 26. <clears throat> Romans 15, 29. Patty, you want to read that? Sure. Romans. <clears throat> Keep in hand in 13 because we're going to be coming back. We're almost done with it. It's only 13 verses. Mm -hmm. And I am sure that when I come unto you, I shall come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. Okay. So Paul is saying <clears throat> that he, he had somehow received from the Lord Jesus Christ that he was going to have the, 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 the whole revelation of the mystery by the time he, he re, uh, came to Rome. Mm -hmm. Even if it wasn't written down yet. And of course, you know, Second Timothy was the last book he wrote to finish all of his writings. So let's um, look at now 16, 25, and 26. Um, Maureen, can you read that? Romans 16, 25, and 26. Oh, Romans. Do you want me to read? Or you want to oh, read? It's okay. You go ahead. Um, now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began but now is made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandment of the everlasting God made known to all nations for the obedience of faith okay so um Um, now to him that has the power to establish you according to uh, my gospel, that's Paul's gospel, mm -hmm. and to make you stable, and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery given to Paul, which was kept secret, so that information was kept secret until it was finally revealed from Christ in heaven, with Christ's heavenly ministry going to Paul. Um... Since the world began, it was kept secret, but now is made manifest. So now it, the, uh, the mystery has been revealed to Paul. And by the scriptures of the prophets, those are the um, prophets that um, um, are the... Um, uh, um, New Testament prophets according to the commandments of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. To God only wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever and ever. Amen. So now this uh, revelation of the mystery is made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. So in order to you know, be saved, we have to obey what God is saying to us through Paul. Um, verse thir uh, back to uh, chapter 13. Okay, so um, after he had uh, so after um, he had the complete revelation, it was given for him to finish the word of God, which we read in Colossians 125. 
So the words that are written down can be referred to and do not depend on someone's memory about what was said. Once the provoking ministry to Israel was finished, the sign gifts would end. Um, Luke then stopped writing the book of Acts. Let us look at the last several verses after Paul arrived in Rome, in Italy, in Acts 28, 17 through 31. So let's see how this um, provoking ministry ended in Acts 28, 17 through 31. And I'll, I'll read these. So, and it came to pass that after three days, so Paul has finally made it to Rome. Um, Paul called the chief of chiefs of the Jews together, the, the most important people of the Jews together. And when they were come together, he said unto them, Men and brethren, though I have committed nothing against the people or customs of our fathers, yet was I delivered prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans, who when they had examined me would have let me go, because there was no cause of death in me. So the Romans were ready to let him go, to let Paul go. Mm -hmm. But when the Jews spake against it, I was constrained to appeal unto Caesar. Not that I had ought to accuse my nation of. For this cause, therefore, have I called for you to see you and to speak with you, because that for the hope of Israel I am bound with this chain. So the hope of Israel was eternal life. Oh. And to live forever. Okay? And um, it was the resurrection of the saints. So, and they said unto him, We neither received letters out of Judea concerning thee, neither any of the brethren that came showed or spake any harm of thee. So they hadn't heard any of the complaints that were going on in uh, Jerusalem. But we desire to hear thee, and what thou thinkest, for as concerning this sect, so there's um, three sects, the Sadducees, the Pharisees, and the Christians. So he's talking about the Christian sect right now. We know that everywhere it is spoken against. And when they had appointed him a day, there came many to him into his lodging. So Paul was renting a house there in Rome. To whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets from morning till evening. So Paul was hard at work trying to show um, uh, through the scriptures, through Moses and the prophets, that Jesus was the Messiah. Mm. And some believed the things which were spoken, and some believed not. And when they agreed not among themselves, they departed. And after that, Paul had spoken one word, well, spake the Holy Ghost by Isaiah the prophet, unto our fathers, saying, Go unto this people, and say, Hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and not perceive. So he's quoting Isaiah here, that they don't, these people are not, don't have ears. For, you know, some of them understood, but most of them did not. And they didn't, weren't in agreement about what Paul was sharing with them. For the heart of this people is waxed gross, and the ears, their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them, save them. So, um, be it known, therefore, this is the, this is this is when he finally says it unto you that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles, and that they will hear it. So this is where he he for the third time he says, "I'm not going to waste any more time with you know going to the Jews first and then to the Gentiles." And when they had said these words, the Jews departed and had great reasoning among themselves. And Paul dwelt 
two whole years in his own hired house and received all that came in unto him, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no man forbidding him. So he had a two years uh, uh, freedom. So let's take a quick look at Acts 13. Well, we will in a minute. So please keep in mind that the kingdom of God that is referred to in this um, he, uh, these, this last verse mm -hmm. is made up of two realms. So the kingdom of God is made up of heaven and earth. Remember in the beginning God created heaven and earth. So there's two realms. So um, the kingdom of God is made up of both of those realms. Okay? So, um, but first let us look at when um, and where Paul set Israel aside. Um, so it was at Antioch in Pisidia in Acts 13.46. Patty, can you read that? Acts 13.46. And then Maureen, can you read um, at, um, Acts 18.6 where Paul put um, Israel aside in, at Corinth? Okay, so Patty, uh -huh. this is where he does it in Pis Pisidia, okay. Antioch of Pisidia. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you, but seeing ye put it from you, and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. Okay, so this... This is in Antioch of Pisidia, so um, this is this is the first time he said we're going to Gentiles. We mm -hmm. we read the last time, the third time, and now we're mm -hmm. going to read the second time. Maureen, eighteen six, and when they opposed themselves and blasphemed, he shook their his raiment and said unto them, Your blood be upon your own heads. I am clean. From henceforth, I will go unto the Gentiles. Okay. What so was that again? That was 18.6. So oh, 18. the, the Jews opposed themselves and uh -huh. blasphemed. Okay. Uh -huh. So by not believing, they were just hurting themselves. He shook his raiment and said unto them, Your blood be upon your own heads. I'm clean. From henceforth, I will go unto the Gentiles. That was the second mm -hmm. time he said so. And mm -hmm. that was in Corinth. Mm -hmm. That was in Corinth. So notice he's said the, this same thing to the Jews. He's informed them that you know he's he's gone into uh, three different countries. In three different countries, he's he, he proclaimed and said, "I'm going to the Gentiles." So he let them know that God would save the Gentiles in spite of them and without them. Mm -hmm. So now the Acts period is over, and so are the sign gifts. Um, because it was in Acts 28, when we just finished reading Acts 28, and that was when the sign gifts ended. Okay, But, of course, when Paul wrote 1 Corinthians, where are we in Acts? <laughs> we're in Acts, what? 19. So we're not all the way to Acts 28 yet. Oh. Okay, so Patty, can you read verse 9, 13, 9? Okay, uh, Acts 13. 9. I mean, in 1 Corinthians 13, 9. Oh, oh. oh. We're back. Okay, we're back. back. To, we're back. <laughs> yeah, we're 13, back. 13, 9. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. Okay, so by this time, so like I said, in the Acts ministry, when Paul wrote 1 Corinthians, it was Acts 19. Mm -hmm. He had only received part of the revelation of the mystery from the Lord. And Christ said in Acts 9, but recorded in Acts 26, that he would appear to him and progressively give him further revelation. Mm -hmm. So let's turn to that. Acts 26, 15. Mm -hmm. And Acts 26, 15. So I'm just showing that Paul received progressive revelation. Thank you. So Acts I would have 26. Never... Acts 26, 15. 26, 15. Um, Maureen, you want to read that? Mm, sure. Uh, it's actually going to be 15 and 16. It's, uh, why don't you read 16, verse 16 instead? 
Acts 26, 16. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in which I will appear unto thee. Okay, so from the very beginning, Paul, uh, Paul was heard from the Lord on the road to Damascus that the Lord Jesus Christ was going to reveal more things and appear to him. Because he had actually seen Jesus, and he's going to see him some more. Now, Patty, can you turn to 2 Corinthians 12, 1 and 7? 2 Corinthians 12, 1 and 7. We're just going over some verses that shows that Paul gets progressive revelation from our Lord. Uh, uh, 2 Corinthians mm -hmm. 12, 1. It is not expedient for me, doubtless to glory, I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. Okay, so here he says that he's going to, he's not going to glory about the fact that he's going to come to visions and revelations of the Lord. So he's going to have more, okay? Uh -huh. Oh, have more. And, yeah, have more revelations. And then, Patty, why don't you read verse 7? And lest I should be exalted above measure, through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. Okay, so abundance of revelations. Mm. You see that? Mm. Lots more. Mm. Lots more. Whoa. Okay, uh, let's go back to 1 Corinthians 13. And Maureen, could you read uh, verse 10? Sure. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. So now Paul is going to pinpoint when um, the partial revelation and um, the sign gifts that accompanied them will be done away. So he says, the revelation of the mystery was given only in part through... Um, through these gifts. And then when Paul would finally have the complete revelation of the mystery, supernatural sign gifts would not be needed. When uh so when he when, when yeah, when, when that's it. okay, so there's there's two um, sets of completions. There's a complete giving of the revelation to Paul, and then the the, when he finally, so he had it in his mind, but he hadn't written it all down until after Second Timothy. Okay. Oh, okay. So um, when the complete revelation of the mystery has come to him, supernatural sign gifts will not be needed, and we showed that in Romans fifteen twenty nine. We talked about that. Okay. He was going to come to Rome with, you know, having the the gospel. You know to share with them the complete gospel. Okay, verse 11, Patty. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Okay, so Paul refers to the body of Christ as a child. The child speaks... Okay, he spake as a child, that's mm -hmm. tongues, that's tongues. Mm -hmm. um, and then I understood as a child, that's knowledge. Okay, uh -huh. that's a uh -huh. supernatural gift of knowledge. Uh -huh. And then it says, I thought as a child, that's the gift of prophecy there. Uh -huh. Okay, I thought as a child. Mm -hmm. But when the child is a fully grown man, the childish things, which is the spiritual gifts, will be put away. Oh. We should not desire to go back to childish things, the childish things of sign gifts now. Mm -hmm. They have been put away a long time ago. So, um, well, you know, mm -hmm. Paul, Paul well, was probably in, in Rome. He probably arrived in Rome in AD 61. So, you know, it was almost, you know, 
In 2061, it will be 2,000 years ago. So it's been a long time that we haven't had signed gifts. Um, you know, we're getting, it's like 1,900 years, something plus. Okay, so um, verse 12, Patty. Oh, no, you did that one. Yeah. Because, so um, Maureen, verse 12, please. For now we see through a glass darkly, and then face to face. But then face to face. But then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. Okay. So, <sighs> Corinth was famous for its metal mirrors. So Paul uses them in this illustration. But when Paul was... Um, has the full revelation of the mystery uh, from Christ, all will be able to read and learn about what Christ is doing now. Then we in the body of Christ shall be able to see ourselves perfectly or know all that God has said to us and be able to be conformed to his image. Okay? So watch this, guys. See? Now we can see. Now we can mm -hmm. see in the mirror. Okay? Mm. So That's we can cool see clearly. Yeah. <laughs> we can see clearly now. <laughs> we can see our face. Isn't that and we can funny? know our, our, uh, who we are through mm -hmm. the scriptures. Okay? Clearly. And so, and, and so we are being conformed to his image. Um, turn to Romans 8.29. Romans 8.29. 29. We want to look in the mirror and and see Jesus. Okay? That's what we want. Yeah. So it says here, For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So um, we are being conformed into the image of his Son. That's the goal. Um, let's see. Um by the effectual working of his word in us. So, Patty, you get the fun of reading the last verse in 13. Okay. And now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three. But the greatest of these is charity. Okay. So, the sign gifts will cease. But faith, hope, and charity will remain. But the greatest of those is charity. The sign gift cease, as Paul said they would at the end of Acts 28. Today the word of God is complete and there's no more revelation to be added to the Bible. The only other place in the Bible where Paul talks about a mirror is in 2 Corinthians 3.18. So let's go there. 2 Corinthians 3.18. 3.18. Um, Maureen, you want to do that one? Second Corinthians but 3. But we all, with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Okay. So no, no, notice how it says, as we look into the mirror and we see Jesus. Okay. The mirror is his actually his word. Okay, and, and as we see Jesus, you know, we're being changed into His image through His Word working through us. Um, His Word rightly divided working in us. So we're, we're being changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. So the Spirit of the Lord is accomplishing this. So... With Paul's complete revelation, which finished the Bible, his word has the power to transform us into his image. However, okay, this is the caveat. Mm -hmm. We still need the Holy Spirit to give us enlightenment mm -hmm. oh. in order to understand his word. So um, let's go to uh, 1 Timothy 2.14.15. 1 Timothy okay. 2, 14. 15. Okay. 
Um, okay, and then we're going to look at, if he, uh, at um, Paul prayed for believers to have enlightenment in mm-hmm. Ephesians 15, no, 1, 15 through 23. So do, that, that will finish this off. So let's let's see what 1 Timothy 2, 14 and 15 say. Um, 1 Timothy 2, 14, yeah. Patty, go ahead. Oh, no, 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 wait a minute, wait, wait, wait a minute, this? wait a minute. Okay, that's not that's that's, no, not, that's not the wor- words I wanted. Yeah. Okay. Um, no, Paul prayed for enlightenment. Okay, this is what we want right now. Mm-hmm. So um, let's turn to Ephesians. Patty, can you read uh-huh. Ephesians? Well, maybe I should. Ephesians okay. one fifteen through twenty three. Uh, so what? One fifteen. Oh, one chapter one. Why don't we look at them all together? Because sure. this is the last thing we're doing. Then we'll be Ephesians going over our homework. We had a little homework to do, and so we'll do that. So Ephesians 1, um, 15 through 23. Okay, here we go. Almost there. Okay, so, Wherefore I also, after... I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints. Cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Oh, okay. Now I remember the verses that I wanted. Mm -hmm. Okay. I wanted actually right there. I wanted um, 1 Corinthians Mm -hmm. um, 2, 14 and 15. Okay. Let's go there first. First Corinthians, um, okay. Maureen, you want to read that? First yeah. Corinthians two fourteen and fifteen. So, what we're saying here is, <clears throat> we need the Holy Spirit to give us enlightenment in order to understand His Word. So this is uh, important. Go ahead. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him; neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. Okay, so the Word of God is spiritually discerned. So we need the Holy Spirit to help us. Um, let, let's actually, um, Maureen, can you read 13? I should, have, I should have said 13 through 15. Oh. Add 13 to this mix. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but words which man's... But which... Okay, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Okay, so the Holy Ghost is teaching us, okay? So we need the Holy Ghost in us to help us understand God's Word. So now we go to Ephesians 1. And, and this will end it for for this study. Ephesians one. Oh, we'll yeah. Ephesians. I was I was reading there, and um, this is such a beautiful prayer that we all should be praying for each other and for mm-hmm. for me, so I can finish uh, this study on First Corinthians. Please pray this for me and for each other. Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Mm -hmm. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. So we have the power of the resurrected Christ in us. Mm -hmm. Far above the principle um, so he, he set Christ in the heavenly places, far above all principalities and powers and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and hath put all things under his feet, 
and gave him to be the head of all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Mm -hmm. So the church is the body of Christ. Where was that from? That was Ephesians 1, 15 through 23. So yes. let's go to our homework. But before we go there, um, let me just mention that Romans, a concise commentary, is available also on Amazon for those who want meat. <laughs> and I'm trying to finish 1 Corinthians. And um, I, I recommend the Schofield Study Bible 3. But we have to remember that when this has excellent study helps and notes and cross-references. But even though Schofield started to understand the distinctive ministry of Paul, mm -hmm. he didn't know when the body of Christ began. And so we can't rely on everything he says. And also, he didn't know who wrote Hebrews, uh, which none of us know, but we know that it wasn't Paul. Okay, I also recommend this book by Gail Ripplinger. It's the dictionary um, inside the King James Bible by Gail mm -hmm. Ripplinger. So it's a handy tool. Um, so we're going to be in Lori Verstegen's book for our homework on page 186. So um, let's turn to page 186. Oh, Patty, you didn't bring yours today? That's no, okay. No, I have an extra. I didn't think we had to do the uh, homework. Yeah, That's I thought okay. it was uh, 15. That was the next section. No, it's 13. It is? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. See? I'm okay. sorry. Whoops. Uh, <laughs> okay, so 186. Charity oh. never faileth, but the sign gifts will pass away. 1 Corinthians th um, 13, 4 through 11. This passage begins by describing charity. Modern versions, uh, uh, versions of the Bible call charity love in this passage. However, love is a very vague word. There are many different kinds of love. For example, the love you have for your mother is different from the love you have for a friend for an, um, or for one another and both are different from the love of a husband um, for a wife and vice versa we can also say we love ice cream or we love our country however in first Corinthians has a particular kind of love in mind charity charity is love that gives it is goodwill toward all men um, so read 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7 to see how the Bible explains charity. What does verse 8 say charity will do? Charity never do. No, oh, never, never do. do. It will never what? Fail. 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 That's right. That's right. Ch uh, ver um, um, question 2. Charity will never end. For all eternity there will be charity because there will be God. But what does verse 8 Eight say will fail, cease and vanish. Maureen? Prophecies, tongues, mm -hmm. knowledge. Prophecy, tongues, and knowledge. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, um, question three. These were special sign gifts that God, you know, to uh, prophecy, tongues, and knowledge, mm -hmm. that God gave to the new church, the body <coughs> of Christ. The church needed these gifts because the Bible was not yet complete. Paul was still receiving revelation from the Lord, as we read in 2 Corinthians 12.1. So prophets, for example, were able to speak God's word once it had been revealed to Paul. See? So it's revealed to Paul first, and then they, the prophets can speak those words. And validate, the prophets also could validate letters that were received from Paul, mm -hmm. and they could also identify false teachers. Um, now, but when that which is blank Perfect. is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. So Paul, you know, pinpoints as soon as he has all the revelation. Then um, the 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 partial knowledge that they had and the sign gifts 
will be done away. <clears throat> Once the perfect word of God was complete, the church no longer needed the supernatural gifts of divine knowledge and prophecy that verse 9 says were in part. Notice how Paul compares early stages of the dispensation of grace to childhood. He um, says in 1 Corinthians 13 and 11, When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I what? put away. away childish things. So now we can put away those sign gifts. Okay? It is the perfect, complete Word of God that enables us to become the perfect man of God now, as we read in 1 Timothy 3.17. 2 Timothy. I mean, yeah, 2 Timothy 3.17. Oh, thank you. So let, let's go there. Let's go there. 2 okay. Timothy 3.17. 2 Timothy 3.17. And we'll, we'll actually be completely done. 2 Timothy 3. 3.17. If you got it, Patty, you go for it. That the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. You said perfect. And that and and, and that's what we we can be now if we study the Bible. But we need, need to study it. There's no supernatural knowledge. We need to be, you know, have our noses in the Bible every day. And we need the Holy Spirit to help us and be enlightened as we study it. Um, so we need to be a believer. So let's close in with a word of prayer and we'll be done. <clears throat> Dear Father in heaven, in Jesus' name we come before you and we just thank you so much for your word that is everything that we need. It is complete. We don't need anything um, else outside of your word other than your Holy Spirit to help us understand it. In Jesus' name, Jesus amen. Name, amen. 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 Thank you for joining us.